It's time for another history lesson in artificial intelligence. You might have heard of the famous Turing test, or perhaps the Enigma decoder, which it often used in the same sentence with the man who contributed greatly to the foundation of artificial intelligence, Alan Turing. Alan Turing was a British genius, a mathematician and scientist. From a young age, he was fascinated by mathematics and the potential of machines to exhibit intelligence, which led to his development of his life towards his role in breaking the Enigma code during World War II. But even more so, Alan Turing is known for the test which carries his name, the Turing test. But what exactly is the Turing test? The test that Alan proposed in 1950 was a pioneering idea in the field of AI with the purpose of addressing the question whether machines can replicate human intelligence and behavior. Initially called the imitation game, the Turing test acts as a tool to determine if a machine or program can mimic the human intellect to the extent of being indistinguishable from the human intellect. It's simply tested by asking a series of questions asked by a human evaluator. However, Alan Turing's test and questions about whether machines could replicate human intelligence goes further back in history, when Rene Descartes contemplated about automata, or moving machines to respond to human interactions, writing his thoughts down in Discourse on the Method and Meditations on First Philosophy in 1637. How many different automata or moving machines could be made by the industry of man? For we can easily understand a machine's being constituted so that it can utter words and even emit some responses to action on it of a corporeal kind, which brings about a change in its organ. For instance, if touched in a particular part, it may ask what we wish to say to it. If in another part, it may exclaim that it is being hurt, and so on. But it never happens that it arranges its speech in various ways, in order to reply appropriately to everything that may be said in its presence as even the lowest type of man can do. Descartes understood the machines and their ability to respond to humans and acknowledged their limits to respond in a generative way, mimicking human intelligence. How does the Turing test work? For the Turing test to take place, three actors are involved. The machine, a human as comparison, and lastly, the human evaluator. The job of the evaluator is to identify which participant is a machine and which participant is a human person based on their responses. To reach a verdict, the evaluator asks questions and checks the replies. The evaluator would be isolated from both the machine and the human subject to eliminate any influences or disturbances that could influence the outcomes. By asking a series of questions, the evaluator is to determine whether or not one of the two respondents is actually a machine. In the early days, questions would only be asked through a text-only channel, ensuring that the machine and human respondents have a level playing field. However, as technology moves forward, this test will be expanded towards voice chats and perhaps in the future even face-to-face -face conversation. What drove Alan Turing to develop the Turing test? The motivation behind Alan's development of the test can be found in his deep curiosity about the potential of machines to exhibit intelligence behavior. His drive to find the boundaries of AI and understand the nature of intelligence itself was powered with the belief that a machine's intelligence could be expanded through computational methods, eventually replicating human thought processes. Developing the Turing test, Allen set a goal of answering a fundamental question. Could machines exhibit human-like intelligence? His motivation went beyond a mere fascination with the potential of machine. Allen wanted to explore the limitations of AI and understand the nature of intelligence itself. He truly believed human thought processes could be understood and replicated through computational methods, Allen saw this test as a way to identify the gap between humans and machines. For him, the test was a necessary tool to measure a machine's intelligence, not solely reliant on its ability to perform simple and specific tasks, but to show a deeper understanding of human-like behavior. By proposing the Turing test, Allen provided a practical and tangible way to analyze and evaluate the development of AI systems. His test eventually acts as a benchmark to push developers and researchers to strive for even higher levels of artificial intelligence. Why is the Turing test important to the world? Though many people have their doubts on the importance of the Turing test, it's important for several reasons. The test provides the mentioned benchmark for assessing the progress of AI systems. Where AI will contribute greatly to the evolution of the human race, it will always need a test to define the level of intelligence. By attempting to pass the test, researchers and developers have a measure goal to strive for, pushing the boundaries of AI technology. However, the Turing test has important limitations that relate to the ethical part of the test. Since it only measures the level of intelligence, we could wonder about the limitations of artificial intelligence 
compared to the nature of consciousness. Measuring the level of AI also raises the question whether we actually should want machines and robots to be able to interact like humans, think like humans. We think and contemplate about the ethical and societal effects of intelligent robots on society, thanks to Alan Turing's test. When taking an even closer look at the Turing test, it drives researchers and scientists to strive for a deeper understanding of human intelligence. By trying to replicate human-like responses, they gather and gain more insights into the complexity of the human cognitive and the processes that define intelligent behavior. The test challenges us to investigate the mechanisms of the human brain and define the logical ruling behind it to eventually translate this into computational model. Even though the Turing test was created in 1950, its influence on AI nowadays is bigger than ever. Areas such as machine learning and natural language processing have been stimulated with the drive to pass the Turing test. As a result of this stimulation, the technology of artificial intelligence kept improving to what we have these days. Instead of machines performing simple, repetitive tasks for us. Machines are becoming more intelligent than ever, from tools like ChatGPT, Bard, and Copilot to robots developed by Boston Dynamics, artificial intelligence is booming and blooming. With complex algorithms on social media platforms, news apps, and any other app we use for our daily lives, systems are created to process our language and interests, just to respond with personalization. In a way, all these applications show the artificial equivalent of one of mankind's greatest desires, to be Love. But while the Turing test remains a widely discussed and supported concept, it is not without its limitations and criticism. Some people think that the ability to pass the test is not necessarily intelligence or understanding. Critics state that the lack of ethics and empathy in AI could lead to a dystopian future when mankind doesn't interfere soon enough. Another thing famous critics highlight is the consideration of other aspects of human intelligence, such as being creative and showing emotion, which are not captured in the conversation of the assessor. Still, the the Turing test helped greatly in shaping artificial intelligence as we see it today, and it will continue pushing researchers and scientists to reach higher levels of artificial intelligence. Now, let's dive a bit more in the man behind the test. Born in London in 1912, Alan Turing grew up together with his brother, John Ferrier Turing. When Alan turned six, his parents enrolled him at St. Michael's, where his genius mind didn't go unnoticed. The headmistress even stated that she has had clever boys and hardworking boys, but Alan is a genius. Though she was right, Alan Turing did not receive the same recognition everywhere. At Sherborne, his headmaster wrote about Alan Turing. I hope he will not fall between two stools. If he is to stay at public school, he must aim at becoming educated. If he is to be solely a scientific specialist, he is wasting his time at a public school. Even though he kept being misunderstood, Alan never gave up on his talent. And in 1934, he successfully graduated from King's College with a degree in mathematics. And at the age of 27, he was solving complex equations. Unfortunately, and despite his successes in his career, his personal life was anything but that. During his lifetime, homosexual acts were a criminal offense in the UK, which could have led to his proposal to Joan Art, also a mathematician and cryptanalyst. They didn't stay engaged for long, since Turing came out to Joan and decided the relationship couldn't continue like this. At the age of 39, Alan Turing found another love and started a relationship with Arnold Murray, who was 19 at that time. However, when Alan wanted to report a case of burglary to the police, he had to come clean and admit to having a sexual relationship with Arnold Murray. This led to a charge with gross indecency. Turing pleaded whichever he would choose, his life would never be the same again. Alan underwent a form of hormonal changes by injection, rendering him impotent and causing breast tissue to be formed. Eventually, Alan Turing, one of the contributors to breaking the Enigma code machine, the man who designed the fundamental Turing test and a great contributor to the development of artificial intelligence, broke, and on June 8, 1954, he was found dead as a result of cyanide poisoning. His unexpected death was determined to be a suicide, and immediately after his death, the police took charge of the house immediately and found two letters written by Alan Turing himself to his friend, Normal Routledge, where he wrote the following prediction. No doubt I shall emerge from it all a different man, but quite who I've not found out. Four days later, on June 12th, his body was cremated and his ashes were scattered in the gardens of the crematorium. During his lifetime, Alan Turing dedicated his life to solve solving equations and forming the foundation of artificial intelligence. It was only two years later when the Dartmouth Conference was organized by John McCarthy. What could have happened if the two had actually met? We will never know, but can imagine amazing things in the world of artificial intelligence. As this video about the incredible Turing test and the visionary mind of Alan Turing comes to an end, we are left
left with great appreciation for the impact and implications of this groundbreaking concept. The Turing test is one of the strong symbols of our collective aspirations to create machines that not only mimic, but eventually possess human-like intelligence. It represents our relentless pursuit of knowledge about the nature of intelligence and our desire to push the boundaries whenever possible. The pursuit of passing the Turing test has fueled technological development and resulted in the creation of sophisticated algorithms and systems that can process and produce language that is similar to that of humans. And let's never forget about Alan Turing, the brilliant mind behind the Turing test. He was not only a code breaker and mathematician, but he was a visionary ahead of his time. His contributions to cryptography during World War II and his pioneering work in the field of artificial intelligence have forever shaped the world we live in today. Despite the challenges he faced, Turing's intellect, creativity, and determination continue to inspire generations of scientists and thinkers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on technology and the people behind it.